you said, I have a pen in my hand and I'm writing the narrative for things I can't control, I think you said. Yeah, out of my control. Yeah, yeah. things out of your control. Will you tell me more about what that means to you? Sure. Uh, th that's actually how I live my whole life. And I think unconsciously, I stepped into that space as a child because I couldn't control my dad up until I got strong enough to actually fight back. <laughs> but up until that point, I couldn't. And there were two directions I could have gone in. One was the victim and, oh, woe is me. And this is part of when I work with clients as well. I'm like, look, I don't go, I'm not a digger. I don't want to go do archaeology and figure out the why of the past, right? I think the why for the future is much more important. So there's two mindsets here. Woe is me or wow is me. And that comes from my childhood. So for me, I was going to be the one that was going to be like a superhero, right? And, and I am a big superhero nerd, so, <laughs> you know. And so I started penning that narrative that this stuff that's happening with my dad is so cool. It's going to get me, make me stronger, do something. Literally, it did happen. Because if I didn't have that, quote, boot camp, Desiree having cancer and the 11 year journey, the adversity of that would have been overwhelming. Instead, the adversity became a contrast color on the painting of our lives because that was the narrative we were giving. It. So when I talk about that, we cannot control. There's many times I'd like to say, well, I'm like, damn it, just the world needs to stop for five minutes. Let me get my breath, and then we can all go back to living. But just stop. And I can't do that, right? <laughs> so I have to figure out, well, who am I? What is the narrative that I want to live through this experience? And that, I think, is, is the key, let's say, to living a quality life. And it does sort of come, ties into palliative care very well as well. But if you think about it, and we were talking about this a little earlier, you know, the saying is know thyself. And, you know, the first Matrix movie, everyone learned it <laughs> if you're a Matrix fan, but, you know, I think many people watch that movie. I'm starting to believe, not just think about it or ponder, but truly believe and understand it's self-creation. I'm not a religious person whatsoever. I am spiritual. I do believe in energy. I do believe in creative forces. And yes, I would love to manifest a ton of money right here and maybe something over there. And, and yes, actions will do that. But I can manifest myself. I can create myself. In every moment, we are creating ourselves, whether we realize it or not writing the narrative, as you put it, with the thoughts we choose to give our attention. Yeah. And for me, rather than trying to, you know, I, I think there, there was a time when I did a lot of looking at my limiting beliefs, which are narratives, right? That were in my, in my opinion, holding me back, right? These and rewrite them, replace them. You know, I did my neurolinguistic programming training and we learned how to do these. Oh, I don't even remember what it's called now. It was years ago, but like switching things and, you know, replacing limiting beliefs with empowering ones. And I did that and saw it changes in my life as a result, but not as deeply as I would have thought. Like I thought I could go in there and get that limiting belief out, like pull it out like it was a weed and then it would be gone. But it wasn't like sometimes things would change and sometimes things came back. And I was like, well, what's going 
ah, I must not have done a good enough job. And there were always more roots to pull out, right? But at some point, I started to see that if I know I'm telling a story with my thoughts, if I know that I am creating myself with the thoughts I give my attention to, the ones that look real in this moment, I actually don't need to change the story to change my experience. Mm. Like I can actually see, oh, I'm telling a story that Stephanie's a victim right now. Okay. Because if I'm telling the story, for one, sometimes it's hard to change it, right? When I'm in the middle of it, when it's sucking me in, I have influence, but not control is how it seems to me. Like, like I can, but if I don't see it and sometimes I just don't see it because I'm too deep in the shit, I'm too deep in it. I can't see it in that moment. It's like the choice doesn't exist. It does exist, but I've forgotten in that moment. But as soon as I can see myself creating myself, creating a painful experience for myself or a joyful experience for myself. There is a choice, a space of choice that opens up, which I may or may not take. And that space, no matter how tiny, there's freedom that lives there. There is an infinity of space in that, even though it may be so tiny, even though I may stay stuck in my victim story for and throw a tantrum for the next five minutes about something. But it's loosened it up for me now so I can watch the story unfold more. And and it does change because as soon as I see that, as soon as we see that we're creating ourselves in a certain way, we can see that we can do it differently. We can bring our attention to different things like you're saying gratitude. And what do I want to create? What life do I really want to be living? Instead of lamenting the one that I have, or regretting the things that I don't have. 